Friday the 24th of July, inquiry regarding uh, Monsieur Taylor Whitney, agent Monsieur Maurice, uh, assistance, assistance P. Dadier G. Jacob. Understanding that your excellency is soon to depart from Paris, I have prepared this report in haste and apologize for any shortcomings which may result from the speed with which it was prepared. Uh, in accordance with your excellency's instructions, I have initiated surveillance of Monsieur Cat's Ka domicile as well as that of Monsieur Whitney. Attached are the promised dossiers on Monsieur Whitney and Monsieur Cat. Please bear in mind that these are assembled on short notice and thus do not represent a thorough inquiry. As per instructions, my associate sh uh, shall continue surveillance of Monsieur Whitney until his planned departure and tonight's Orient Express. It shall, it shall then prepare a final report to be delivered by hand to your excellency's agent at v Vienne. Uh, Vienne West Benoff, tomorrow six o'clock. Right, uh, Monsieur Whitney. This report covers the movements. Better. Wednesday. Uh, this subject is staying at the pension Malmaison Nuit sur Seine. The pension, owned by the widow Francais, is known to the police to be a lo locale frequented by Serbian expatriates. Ordering a carriage, the subject proceeded to the Ile Saint Louis, six quai d'Orléans. Watching from the street, I saw an upstairs lamp go on. A few minutes later, the subject left, and trusting my associate to follow Monsieur Whitney, I entered the house and ascertained that the department belonged to a Monsieur Robert Cath, also an American, and that Monsieur Cath had been away for some weeks. The concierge volunteered that she had never even seen Monsieur Whitney before, but as he, but as he claimed that he was an old friend of Monsieur Cath, she allowed him to go upstairs. She added that in the past two days, many people had asked about Monsieur Cath, including the police. A short walk around the block was sufficient. Right, music's getting louder. I think we'll skip that, just in case. I can't remember what we need to do. That sounds a little problematically climaxed. Ooh, press the button. Ah, brilliant, grab it and go. Because that's now a suitcase full of gold. Actually, now we've got that, I think we can... We'll, we'll keep reading this, actually. Right. After leaving Monsieur Cass' residence, the subject proceeded to the ca Café saint Régis, where he sat for some hours at a corner table, reading some political tracts of Monsieur Jean-Zur, which he often set down in apparent boredom. He spoke to no one. Shortly after midnight, Monsieur Whitney left the café, passed again by the Quai Doli d'Olion, and finding Monsieur Cath still absent, returned to his pension for the night. I took the liberty of commencing inquiries regarding Monsieur Caff. It appears that Robert Caff is the man who, since Monday last, has been sought by both the English and French police in connection with the murder of a policeman in Belfast. Although the suspect has been identified in the papers only as an American doctor, the police believe that doctor, murderer, and Monsieur Caff are one, and that he is now in or near Paris. Police are stationed at all train stations, so the fugitive tried to flee the area by rail, hence why we went on by boat. Yeah, okay, so we will... No, 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 we'll read Thursday. At 8 a.m., a package was delivered to Monsieur Whitney's hotel. It appeared to be a rolled document of some sort. My associate ascertained from the courier that the sender was a Monsieur Coppelli, an antique dealer, residing at number 5 Rue Ville de Tompe. At 10 p.m., Monsieur Whitney ordered a carriage and was followed by my associate to the Rue Ville de Tompe. A small crowd had formed directly in front of Monsieur Copet. Copet. Is that an I? Or is that an L? Uh, Copelli. Copelli's uh, department. The concierge informed Monsieur Whitney that Monsieur Copelli had been taken ill suddenly in the night. A doctor had been called, but to no avail. As we watched, a coffin containing the unfought Monsieur Cop uh, Copelli was loaded into a waiting carriage and driven off. Monsieur Whitney returned to his hotel, where he was awaited by a British gentleman of medium height, bald, thin, clean-shaven, wearing spectacles, with a habit of touching his handkerchief to his perspiring forehead. Monsieur Whitney and Monsieur uh, Perlmutter, for this was the gentleman's name, remained in Monsieur Whitney's room for over an hour, at the conclusion of which Monsieur Perlmutter left in a bad humour, in the opinion of the chambermaid. I have contacted my counterpart in London with a request for information about Monsieur Perlmutter, and expect a response within 24 hours. Monsieur Whitney left the hotel soon after, leaving instructions at the desk to purchase one first-class ticket to Bel Belgrade with supplement on the Orient Express departing Friday evening. I continue to monitor the situation. Please accept, Monsieur, the assurance of my most respectful sentiments. 
Uh, Monsieur, through my connections, it has come to my attention that an unusual piece described as a Chinese egg circa 1650 has in the past few days been shown to certain art dealers in Paris. Knowing of your grace's interest in eggs of this period, I thought you might wish me to pursue the matter. The seller, Monsieur Tyler, Ty Mr. Tyler Whitney, is an American gentleman who appears to be acting as agent for the true owner. I shall be travelling to Paris on tonight's steamer on other business. If your grace wishes, I should be delighted to meet with Mr. Whitney and to make inquiries regarding the egg. Awaiting your instructions, I remain most respectfully yours. Uh, Gottfried Perlmutter. Uh, monsieur, I trust... Uh, journey from Vienna was nice. That's... There's a lot of reading. I trust your grace's journey from Vienna was pleasant. In accordance with your telegraphed instructions, I met again with Mr. Whitney. Unfortunately, our hopes of a quick conclusion to this fair were not fulfilled. I communicated to Mr. Whitney the extre extremely generous offer which your grace has authorised me to make on your behalf. I informed him, without identifying your grace by name, that the buyer would arrive in Paris that evening and was prepared to deliver the entire sum in gold bullion upon receipt of the piece. I believed then, and still do believe your offer to be sufficiently in excess of the highest competing bid. In view of this, Mr. Whitney's response was surprisingly guarded. For example, when I asked to see the piece again, with the aim of answering the questions raised in your grace's letter, he stated that for reasons of security he had removed it from the hotel. Nevertheless, I felt sure that the piece was at that moment in the room with us. When I suggested we meet that night, Mr. Whitney rejected it immediately. He claimed there was not enough time for him to retrieve the egg from its place of safekeeping. Again, I felt that he was lying to gain time, but cannot guess why. It is possible that he is simultaneously conducting negotiations with another party, but if this is the case, why did he not simply tell me so in order to drive up the price? Indeed, Mr. Whitney's entire demeanour seemed to have undergone transformation from the previous day. Whereas the first time we met, he had taken the piece out of its case and shown it to me with a casual air, today he seemed nervous, smoking one cigarette after another. I thought he was perhaps afraid of being robbed, but this hardly explains the inconsistency of his behaviour. Knowing your grace's desire for a quick resolution, I pressed Mr. Whitney for a time and place for our transaction. After objecting on various trivial grounds to each of my proposals, he finally put forth his own, a meeting aboard the Orient Express on which he is leaving Paris tomorrow night. Recalling that your grace intended to return to Vienna by the same train, I thought that this arrangement might coincide with your own plans. If not, I would be happy to meet Mr. Whitney on the train myself and make the transaction as your grace's agent. I hope I have not tried your grace's patience by dwelling on doubts and uncertainties raised in my mind by Mr. Whitney's strange reluctance. As a buyer and seller of art and anti anti antiquities, it is my business to notice such nuances, however insignificant, since they can affect a successful negotiation. If there is any further service I can re render you in connection with this, or any other matter, I remain at your disposal. Your faithful servant, Gottfried Perlmutter. Hence the, uh, that explains the uh, bad humour he was in then. So, uh, we now have the gold for... Which way are we going? Is that the way we just came? Hello! So yes, uh, oh, oh, Schmidt's in the concert, isn't he? <laughs> Hello. So we got. We need the gold to show to Schmidt. Um, the last time I played, I didn't get the egg to max in time, which led to uh, one of many fail states you can get. Uh, I got killed a few times, and uh, the egg got stolen along with the gold a few times. I think is what happened. Yeah, so we'll put that. I thought you went for under there, but we'll, we'll leave it there for the moment. Right. So we got just got to wait. We may as well wait for the concert to end. Schmidt's in there, you know. So. Bonjour, Monsieur. Not sure. I've returned! I'm not sure there's much to actually do. If we talk... Yeah, probably best not to... Uh, hello. Best to talk. It may cause some... Uh, problems. But I'm not sure exactly what else we can do. Um, I mean... Most of the things we've got to do are like... Show the money to Schmidt, which we can't do because he's here. Um... We've, the egg is safe. We've retrieved it and we've put it somewhere safe and reliable. Safe from you. You. Uh, so if I... Uh, what's the important things we need to know? This will be relevant, but there's not much point in... Are we done? Oh. 
Oh, no. Moving on to the next piece. But yes, um, this is this will be relevant. Um, I could actually... Ah, no, can't go back to the egg. But the egg, I think, is... Part of it is the world. So, let me explain. Um, so, I think it's something to do with each of these is a place. Um, and so... As a world away, as a colder kingdom... So, the opposite side to Australia, set somewhere in Europe, Calder Kingdom, Scandinavia, ringed with blue. Uh, possibly Denmark? I don't know. We'll have to have a look. Um, but I don't think that's relevant for a while. <laughs> um, oh, I could try investigating other people's rooms. I think I will, actually. I will. I will. It depends if... Monsieur? Ah, but everyone's going to be in there, so there's, le there's going to be less. There's not going to be as much moving around. Oh, we might be able to. Let's see if he's. Bonjour, monsieur. Like Alexei's next to us. Pardon me. Maybe we can uh, get into his room if he's still in here. Ah, he's not. I was wondering if he, if he was still in here, we might be able to go in his room. Maybe we should have done that first. But, uh, we could try knocking on his door, actually. Oh, or not. We could, might be able to go in through the window. Bonjour, monsieur. As we did with, uh, 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 Anna's. Why am I knocking on my own room? Not the smartest. Uh, hello, me. Are you in there? Yeah, so he might. Ah! Oh, he's in there now. Looking at his book. But, uh,. Actually, he might take the book with him wherever he goes. That's a bad idea. So yes, uh, this is a place to keep the egg. Unfortunately, it is an obvious place to keep the egg, and it will probably get us into a lot of trouble. Hmm. Yeah, we, got, we kind of got to wait for the concert to end at this point. There's not. I don't think there's much else we can do. There's no one to talk to. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. So we may as well. There's no point talking either. So yeah, we're just gonna, you know, relax. Hopefully not get any content ID be because of this. Hmm. Come on. It's a problem with real-time games like this. Is is although it does mean that the plot will always progress. It does mean you hit points like this where the plot isn't progressing. Because the real time hasn't got to a point where you can get do more stuff. Oh, what time is it in the game? It's nearly five. So I'm guessing uh, at some. I'm guessing uh, soonish the uh, the uh, concert will end. Uh, Cronus will probably complain that we've nicked his gold. I would assume. Um, there's no one uh, else around to really talk to. I don't think. I mean. The only person that we really need to speak to would be Schmidt and show him the gold. Um, just to be like, yes, we have gold. The deal can still go. Because he, oh, he wants to see it before Vienna. Oh. Uh, music. Um. Uh, what? Oh. Has time progressed? Have we fallen asleep for a long period of time? No, we're not falling asleep. I don't know, what just happened? Yes. Ah, uh, right, yes, of course. So that's going with... Um... What, uh, what, uh, Obelinsky, Obelinsky said. Um, maybe you can make it sing. Hmm. Birds sing, don't they? Dumpty, dumpty, dumpty. Which is hence why this is relevant. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to have a look at that and see what the button presses are. Because I'm sure there's something to press or do or what, how it's relevant. Probably should have had a better look at the egg before throwing it to Max. <laughs> Hmm. It's nice music, isn't it? 
I wonder if it's one if it's stuff composed for the game or if it's an actual piece from this time period. Well, or or previously, obviously, because they could obviously be playing a, a, a classical or other piece from the I don't know 18th or 19th centuries. Hmm. I wonder why we have a match. We have the, that goes with the egg. So there's some connection there. We have a master key, we have a bit of newspaper, we have information about everyone, we have we have the um the uh, uh translation of the fairy tale. It might be worth me looking at these and making a note of them. So Vast on Lansang's Cage of Silver Bells. Um, so that's Australia, I think. Maybe Denmark. Ancient stones, though, makes circle of ancient stones make me think Stonehenge. So that'd be the UK instead. Ring with blue. Okay, yeah, yeah. UK makes sense. UK makes more sense. I wouldn't say colder. Maybe damper. Actually, relative to Australia, UK would be colder. Uh, come on back uh, on the rooftop of the world. I'd say Himalaya. You finished now? Yep. There we go. Finished. I'm the hero. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up, Schmidt. Yeah. Wonderful. Pardon me. I wonder if he's still in there, if he's done something. Excuse me. Okay. Sorry. Might be an idea. So, yes, it might be worth going through that and looking through the areas. Can we congratulate her? Say she played really well. No. Okay. Bonjour, monsieur. Got to wait for Schmidt to go back. I think possibly to his cabin. Now, he could have, of course, gone in, but probably not the best Excuse idea. Here, Schmidt. Not here. Come to my compartment. Okay, that is kind of my plan. Um, actually, we might be able to... Excuse me. Ah! Put down that better, I might have been able to get into his compartment without... So, we'll, we'll give him the gold once we... Uh, well, we'll show him the gold, certainly. Bonjour, monsieur. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, monsieur. Me. In a glass of champagne. You're kind, but Pardon I'm me? a little tired just now. Thank you. Then how about dinner? Pardon me? Of course, Mademoiselle. you're right. Yes? Who is it? Sorry, my mistake. Or not, okay. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Right. We'll grab the gold. No, we'll grab the gold. There you are. And we'll. Uh, Pardon me? Bien. 